Hey, welcome to uh, Joey's Helping Others. Um, today, this is a new media edition. So what does that mean? It means that I'm going to be talking about what new media is to me right now, um, specifically about a project and initiative that I want to do that I've been having in the back of my head for quite some time using big data and hardware and software to make art. And um, I was inspired by a conversation I had with a friend to kind of really uh, trudge this back up and get going on it again. I, um, I've i been into new media since I was, uh, I guess, 16, 17. I started making abstract videos, um, like digital abstract videos back in 99. And ever since then, um, going through the ACT Lab, studying under Sandy Stone with my colleague Brandon Wiley, I got um, just that much more into hardware and software and being able to manipulate media beyond just audio and video. And so what I want to do today is kind of just show you all some of the projects I've done in the past and uh, talk a little bit about how um, I want to uh, explore this theme of new media to activate um, thought. And so uh, when I say I want to do big data, hardware and software and art, what I'm really saying is, is that there's a lot of big data sets. Big data is a really big word right now. There's AI, you know, artificial intelligence is another one or machine learning. And what I'd like to do is create um, like either visual, like with LEDs, uh, sculpture or um, audio with uh, like MIDI or um, samples to take data streams of information so it could be geographical it could be uh, statistical like meaning um, uh, statistics of, of habit and then representing it in, in an art form and then creating an art installation uh, where I work with other artists to create like facilitate creating these kinds of, of, uh, of pieces and putting a show on and so um, to kind of show what I mean by that is I'm going to go through some examples and I'll include links to all these. As you can see, I have a ton. So, um, you know, feel free to skip around. Maybe I'll even add chapters in. But to start, like, um, I want to show you all, uh, uh, like, some crime statistic stuff that I had been looking up and thinking about how to represent visually. And uh, I've just been, you know, thinking a lot about how we think about crime and police enforcement and social justice and so one of the things i kind of started thinking about was well you know what are these calls that are coming in to police and you know what does that look like in terms of i don't know, a very visual person so i like having representations and so i did a google search and i found this uh, sapd calls for service and then i also found a community crime map and uh, I just thought it was kind of interesting to go through both. So this is uh, people that are calling for uh, police or others to show up, you know, calling 911 and then 911 dispatchers uh, sending it to where they think it needs to go. And um, the green is uh, property crime calls. The red is crimes against persons. The yellow is traffic and the blue is other. And so um, like if I zoom in, and we let it repopulate. Let me give it one second. All right, you can see the squares still got to fill in. There we go. Um, you can click, and we'll tell you like uh, you know this was a call, assault on progress, assault in progress, um, 6 13, 2020, you know 4 14 uh, p.m. And then on this side, this is where. So I'm gonna uh, go ahead and pause it. And um, essentially what I'd like to do is be able to take information like this and use different uh, 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 qualifiers, like different fields, and uh, do various representations, whether it's like, say, um, a circle of LEDs, right? So an array of LEDs and being able to literally map it and show it and people be like, what are all, you know, why are the lights flashing that way? It's like, oh, well. These are crimes against people. These are traffic. This is, and, and people are like, oh, you can represent data that way. It's like, yeah. And what I'm really trying to do is kind of think about like, how could you ultimately create like public art that way? 
So um, another, uh, uh, let me see, this is um, another project I wanted to show real quick. So this is uh, moving away from the big data and more about just kind of hardware art interface. And, um, and this, this is a, a little clip about a, um, a hardware uh, game controller that Jeremy Zunker, a colleague of mine, uh, Christian Rios, a co-owner of Dreamanoids with me, uh, collaborated on where um, we built out this uh, controller. Um, you may have noticed I kind of breezed past this game controller here. Uh, I'm not sure if I've ever talked about this controller on the blog or vlog or podcast, whatever you want to call this. But um, this is a Dreamanoids custom made acrylic fight stick controller. It uses a, uh, a PS360 uh, controller board and um, we actually made these back when when we when Chris, Christian when it was Christian and it was an arcade uh, we made these fight sticks uh, Zunk Works uh, Jeremy Zunker and I um, developed this fight stick uh, Jer mainly Jeremy he uh, designed it in SolidWorks which is a uh, kind of a, a design program for physical objects an engineering design uh, program. And it was really, it was a really fun project uh, doing this bend. You can see that there's a bend in here. Um, was real fun. Jeremy got like a hair dryer and took the coil apart and made a line that went across and had two boards. And we'd actually put the acrylic across this board and it would heat up just on, on where we wanted to bend it. And then we made a mold and we just bent the acrylic and then the rest of it and including the top was all laser cut using a laser cutter that actually Jeremy and I and a couple other people had raised $13,000 uh, to get for a hacker space in San Antonio called 10 bit works. And so um, all of these are Japanese uh, uh, parts that we ordered or I ordered from Japan. And then I made the custom wiring uh, 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 cable uh, package here that you see and uh, it's tradition to do a um, crimp style which is uh, very different for me because I'm used to doing a solder solder job on most projects in the audio but in the gaming industry uh, they all do crimp so that was a uh, fun but uh, you can use this on the PS so yeah so um, so this was like kind of one of my first uh, uh, forays into like a finished product, you know, making something. We ended up making, I think, five of these, selling a couple, and we kept two, fortunately. Like, I'm so glad, like, so many projects I do, I end up giving away, like, what I have or selling what I have, and I'm so glad that we were able to keep two of these, and we have them to this day. We have them at the shop. We have this one, and then we also, I believe we have a blue and pink one. They're just, they're so cool. They're, yeah. Uh, I think we were selling them for like two or 300 bucks a piece. And that was a little bit above the cost. <laughs> it cost us to make them. Um, but it was just so, oh my gosh. Like, so uh, part of the reason I'm so into hardware and software is like the ephemeral feel, like you get, to, it's physical, you get to touch it. And like, and with the software, it's like you get to make physical things go. And, um, and so, you know, working, uh, uh, on projects like this, like this is the opposite, right? So you got hardware that's being inputted and making software go, uh, for like street fighter and, and other games like that. But, um, but I'm just always intrigued by that space. Now, uh, 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 let's go on to another one. So this is, um, oh, so this is a little video I shot. I don't even know if I, I need uh, audio for it. Um, where I went to a synth meetup in Southtown, uh, vinyl, which is a, uh, a uh, actually a record store in San Antonio, Texas, but uh, they were doing uh, like a synth meetup. And so all these people brought their synths and stuff. And I actually ended up building a synth uh, that next week with uh, just a very, very simple one with Jeremy. But, um, but this also gets me really into the physicality and manipulation of sound and audio and makes me think about, you know, what if we were to process data through these synths and kind of think of, um, about, abstraction of, of these these ideas. Another person I, I would pay homage to is this guy named Jerry Chimkus in Austin who made this thing called the Cosmic Ray Detector, which um, uses a, a spectrometer 
to measure like cosmic rays that were coming in and then convert it to MIDI uh, signals and just have like this most random m- music playing sounds like soundscape playing. And, um, and that also like has influenced, uh, what I've been into a lot too. Hey Mary, this is, Joey. This is a, a project that I made for a friend of mine, um, who's into reuse It's called spare parts. And, uh, I made a, a little, uh, sign with her name on it. And what I did was like, I soldered two LEDs together and I made a little holder out of wire and cardboard because she's really into, uh, like I said, reuse. And so. Uh, I made these little instructions here to kind of show her how to how to make this all go together. And of course, I shot it with one hand. But what you do is you stick the batteries in there and I'll come kind of more towards the end over here because I kind of fumble through this. Um, but the idea here is, is like is, is, you know, sometimes you don't even need computers or like a power source or very even much soldering skill. You can um, let's see if we can get this thing to play. There we go. Uh, and all I did was just make it so that the wire leads. Yeah, there we go. Here, let me scoot back here for a second. Uh, it's not scooting back enough. There we go. I'm going to break this thing. I know it. I'm backwards and it won't work. All right, so there we go. Okay, so uh, so all I did was like these wire leads literally touch the battery, and then this completes the circuit. So when you put it on, um, it'll, pull, it'll light up. So you just put them on there. Oh, there we go. And uh, and then you can put the little sign and just, I made it so you literally just rest the sign up. And you get this kind of cool backlit sign. Because like I'm always thinking about like what a really inexpensive way. So it's not just about like high-end finished products. Sometimes it's like this messy aesthetic too. Um, what's this? This is just some random project. Oh, this is us doing some uh, some music. So, oh, nah, I, I, I want to hurry up kind of through this. This is uh, actually a video from back in like 08, 09, I think, um, when I built an amplifier. And uh, and this was just, I had a friend, my, my colleague Brandon, that was interested in, in um, creating a, what they call a chip amplifier. It's, it's a new idea using a, a D-class uh, um not a D, uh, D class, a um, a single chip to drive uh, your your speakers, and so we use this one chip. I didn't have to put a heat sink on it. Uh, uh, built the power supply out. It was a little kit, and then had this toroidal transformer that we hooked it up to, and um, and this was like my one of my first forays into kind of creating audio gear. Um, do the facilitation again, like with Jeremy, uh, with, uh, with someone that was, that was, uh, willing to kind of show me the ropes of how it all worked. So like, I want to make clear, uh, I am not an, uh, an electrical engineer. I have a, a PhD in media studies. While many people see me as the computer guy, um, honestly, I don't have any formal training in it. And so a lot of what I've learned is literally through hacking through, just going through, trying things. And then uh, uh, most of it is by just telling really smart people, I have no idea what I'm doing. If you could help me learn how to get through this, that would be awesome. Um, And me picking up the skills that I need in order to do it. Um, Let me see if this is, uh, no, I'll show this one some other time. And uh, I'll show this one some other time. I just want to get through some of the, the less hardware software centric. So this is a hard, this is a hardware software centric piece. This was a, a, a laser harp that uses a thing called an Arduino. An Arduino is a, a little board. I actually have one here that I'll show you all in a bit, but uh, it's a little board here and uh, you can wire it up to a lot of different things to do analog and digital manipulation. And so what this student did was he worked with this guy named Drake and um, took a bunch of uh, laser pointers from Walmart and uh, got a bunch of diodes on the other end and um, uh, uh, was able to um, create a constant connection between the laser pointer and those sensors. So if you brought your hand through it, you would see the lasers hit your hand, but it would also break the connection and that would trigger a sound. This one, not working on any occasion. (laughs) Right. Uh, 
Yeah, it's really awesome. Definitely kind of takes you back in time a little bit. It work, yeah. <laughs> Man, you should you could buy this one for Act three lab. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so this is another one where you know you could definitely abstract that out and use uh, uh, la I mean, lasers have only gotten le less expensive and a little more, a little safer, and uh, and create spaces where maybe people are walking through them and you're using a little smoke machine, um, and it's and it's creating different experiences and things like that. I've I really would want to come back to this one. This was a really cool one um, at some point. Is all... This is a project that I'll come back to some other day. It's a, it's a great one, DJ drumming. Um, By all accounts, what it should do. This is uh, uh, a great project I'll come back to. I, I had all these like projects I wanted to show, but really like I want to stick to the hardware software. This is just running a lot of power through these two cups and creating a water bridge with it. But we'll we'll do that some other time. We'll do this one some other time. Man, so many great ones. Now this is a great hardware software um, human experience project where one of our students um, worked with that guy Drake that I mentioned earlier and uh, used an Arduino like I showed y'all and wired up these bend sensors. So the sensors literally bend and when you bend them, they create a resistance change uh, and they trigger uh, um, events to happen. And so with this, they had set it up to trigger uh, uh, different samples in GarageBand. And so you could literally mix uh, your piece. And so she, she got the, these two pieces of acrylic and put them on there so you'd have like this very visual experience when you're uh, interacting with the piece. And I always thought that was really interesting. And again, like something you could create some some major uh, uh, experiential um, uh, pieces with. That was Whoa. like 07 as well. This I won't uh, show right now, so but it's an Act Lab tattoo. tattoo. So we actually had uh, students get tattoos in awesome. class as a project awesome. one time. Now this is uh, totally different and out of my realm, but um, something I want to show, which is it's called circuit bending, and it's where you take consumer electronics and you bend the equipment to do interesting things. And so this is guy's Saturday, and he had taken this uh, Atari and a Casio keyboard and, and circuit bent them together. So I'll show this. Oh, that no, no, yeah. I have no idea. Yeah, I, I was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dude, we were lucky to finish when we did. Yeah, the, right. the Atari didn't come in until Friday. Can yeah, you do that it again? Took way too longer. Way much it's longer than what we thought. Uh, what do you want? Just, I just want to get some video of you showing how it all works. So, um, so projects like this, like, were, you know, really influential to me, um, being around it all the time. This, uh, this is a piece, uh, that I shot myself, um, where, uh, I was working with this, uh, Chinese calligraphy, but, um, what I'm trying to show here is actually all these LEDs in the background that are bokeh out. This was a, a cube, an LED cube someone had created at the hacker space. And so you can see light moving up and down side to side back to back and i believe it was an eight by eight it may have been a 16 by 16 ah, yeah that's a 16 by 16. wow man that takes a lot of time to create and make addressable and and things but uh, i would love to have one of these again or and to and or to create one myself uh, i don't take some serious patience on my part but um but if I could do that, uh, uh, we can definitely create some like 3D style experiential uh, data representation too. That would be really neat. Um, this is a, a video of um, demonstrating how you can project up onto uh, surfaces. But I think today I would use a TV really uh, as a flat surface and create um, uh, experiential um, uh, uh, data representation that way I, I kind of like the idea of people looking down at, at a table and seeing things so that's something i've been thinking about as well 
Um, <laughs> what's this one? Oh, this is uh, so this is my colleague Brandon, and he's showing off a uh, a hardware piece that he's designing. And so let's uh, let's check that out real quick. So what is this? What do you mean? What is this whole thing? I always ask you this. Oh, this is my um, arcade button synthesizer. It actually works now. Yeah, it works. It works pretty good. Let's see a demo. Wait, I mean, just go plug in the cable. Hold on a second. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Got to plug in. And so, does that have an Arduino in it? Yeah, it's Arduino. Right oh, okay. Here. It's Arduino, and then just the MIDI shield, and then this is the middle is a muck shield, which allows me to attach all of these buttons to the Arduino. It allows you to have like 64 inputs. Okay. And okay. And so this goes over to here. And this that's also Arduino based. Okay. And you're just drawing power from your Arduino, right? Yeah, I'm just feeding the, the shield, which is all the synthesis. So you have a synthesis shield and then a an, um, MIDI interface? Yeah. And then that goes over to the Arduino? Uh, no, that just goes straight into the mixer. Oh, that just goes straight into the mixer? Yeah. This is this is a second synthesizer that I have. That's the, okay. I just want to demonstrate the next generation synthesizer, which is just a uh -huh. straight up Arduino. So what? So wait, so what's going on here then? So, this so the MIDI comes into here, it outputs audio in the mixer. This is just also oh, into the mixer. I see. Okay. So this, this is a separate this is a separate project. There's there's ah. in the mixer. Okay, cool. Yeah. And so how's the key like set up? Is there well so this is a this is a left to right is a step, so okay. right? And then yeah. uh, up left is a fourth, and up there is a fifth. So like this is a major chord. Minor chord. Seventh chord. There you go. That's insane. Oh, and then the black key is removed. So um so yeah, so this, you know, this to me is like another piece that would be really interesting uh, either as an input device um, or something that like think about creating an arcade, uh, an array that when you push the buttons, it, it, it again is triggering different data sets and, uh, and having um, interesting outputs. Like, I don't know, I'm just thinking out loud. Uh, this is just some augmented reality, you know, augmented reality would be interesting too, would be to create, uh, have people create like physical drawings, you know, organic, like an, an acrylic piece or an oil piece or a collage or a mural. And then you go up on there and it shows data representations, uh, uh, that are thematically tied to, um, the art, uh, that's, that's created there. So another thing I've been, I've been thinking about. I'm Joey. Um, We're at Timbit Work. This is this is so kind of more on the construction so hardware side. I built a, a, a speaker out of paper, literally, and, uh, and um, I just took some little magnets wheel, and some wire, wire and uh, wire, put it so together, magnetic. and then so put a little so piece of paper, and uh, and then I just took the output from my the phone camera. at the time, my iPhone. Like further in, you can hear it playing music. Uh, you just put it right above here. You can hear it through the speaker. Or the mic on the This is uh, BB3's casino. So while a little finicky, it may be interesting to create like speakers that, like that, you know, out of different materials or reused materials. And and uh, and then again, send data or our experiences through it that uh, have representation creating pieces that kind of call into question you know what's going on now this piece is a piece that actually uh while it doesn't use big data it's more like a qualitative piece in that um i worked with this artist ruth Winteo, and we were looking well here I'll, I'll display this piece. it's not that long i'll display the piece real quick project um between Ruth and I, yeah. and uh, yeah, it's an intermodal art collaboration between Ruth and I, and uh, it's called Mikasa de Luz, and um, it's kind of Ruth and I's idea of how to preserve San Antonio's uh, cultural artifacts as we are gentrified um, throughout the downtown and south, uh, south town area. And where are we going to see this at? 
We'll be seeing this at Luminaria tomorrow, um, March 9th at 7 p.m. to 12 a.m. And what inspired you to, to select this particular piece of uh, backdrop that we're looking at here? Um, the backdrop is um, uh, sh uh, footage of my neighborhood. So it's two streets down down by my house and my mother making tortillas and um, that's just some, a ritual that she does every morning, but not it's not very alive anymore. And so I wanted to, to document and preserve it. And that's what's going on in the background. And Joey, tell us about uh, this uh, technique of what we're looking at in this projection behind well, you here. Well, Ruth and I uh, collaborated on this, and um, Ruth is like a traditional artist, and I'm a new media artist, so I kind of took uh, Ruth's uh, traditional paintings and, and kind of brought them to life uh, through cinematography and, um, and through colorizing her sketches. Uh, in Photoshop, and so we then use this uh, projection mapping software called Mad Mapper in Module 8 to just create this really visually striking experience for the for the patrons of Luminaria. Yeah. And so, um, so yeah, so like we literally built like a little house, got some muslin cloth, and then um, we used one projector, and uh, this is what it looked like at Luminaria. And uh, you see the projector here, and this is the house. And, um, and again, uh, so I call it more quanti uh, qualitative because instead of representing data, we literally had artifacts. So like artifacts from that space being represented in this art installation. So again, it doesn't have to all just be data sets. It can be all kinds of things, but in a, in a new media fashion. So uh, this video is uh, Brandon pitching some um, different interfaces that he's looking at and, and developing. Uh, back in 2012. This was this was really cool. Prototype. Okay. Okay, this is like a very bad prototype of my next instrument uh, out of cardboard. It's going to be wood. So what it, it's the Triforce from Zelda, and these are going to be arcade buttons, and then there's going to be strings, like guitar strings that go over here, and it's going to be a pickup, and then you can bow it, uh, bow the strings with like a violin bow, and then it will, it's going to make triangle waves, uh, and it's going to be another like chiptunes instrument. And uh, and here's another one of his. So, Brand so Brandon, what is this real quick? This is uh, Gary and I've been working on this uh, arcade button synthesizer. So this is him showing how, the what's arcade the, like, how's style it work? synth before Well, the it's demo. got arcade buttons. It's got 37 of them in this hexagonal layout, and then you can like bam out. And then uh, it's got our, it's Arduino based. And then there's like a MIDI shield on the Arduino, and then I have a MIDI to USB adapter. And you can plug it in, and you know hook it up tape. And so like I show you those two because. Um, a lot of times people think it's like you need this high tech or like this this um, uh, skill set. It's like Brandon is like, this is my guitar. And you're looking at a cardboard with holes in it. And it's like, yeah, you know, you can start with some paper. You can cut things out. And then you go and you seek out the next part and the next part and the next part. And, um, and that's one of the things I also really love about new media is that most of the time when you're overthinking it, um, you can go back to just like literally drawing it or cutting it out with construction paper, pulling the crayons out, showing people what you want to do. Uh, sim and it's simplifying your project at the same time to uh, uh, help you streamline and create something. So I always like that about Brandon. Um, <laughs> All right. My name is Chris Peter and I made an evil kitty DJ head. So based off of my own character, it's Dead Mass inspired. And uh, it took about two months to make, about $150, and about 80 plus hours working on it, like two hours, three hours a day. So it definitely took some time. All right, everybody give them a round of applause. And, uh, and so this, uh, this was a paper mache project, you know, again, going back, like, you know, mixing uh, uh, traditional art techniques, new media, just... You know, what, what made this new media? Well, it was the audio trigger for the LED uh, array that he had in there. And then also how at that time EDM, this is back in 2012, uh, was really taking off with this kind of visual aesthetic. So, all right. Uh, that's just an awesome band. One of my favorite bands ever. They do a lot of circuit bending and, and projects, but uh, I don't need to show them right now. I don't need to show that one right now. This is a circuit bent box. Um, that a student made back in the act lab that I thought was really interesting. We did a bunch of synth and light 
and he built like his own little microphone that he like put in a PVC pipe and had painted and I don't know, just created this whole experience out of it that um, I think also, again, kind of going back to the Mikasa de Luz, like has this presence to it that you can um, begin to appreciate. Uh, so let me see. Let me see if we turn the lights on. There we go. So literally he created this box out of like a TV, an old TV, and then like made it into his little own stage where he performed. This is what I did. Um, it kind of is symbolizing TV. So I mean, it's made out of an old TV and I just put plywood coming out of it and painted it, but you know, wanting to be the entertainment, wanting to be a kind of TV kind of thing. But also at the same time, TV is, you know, it's just a bunch of noise. <laughs> nonsense. I like but that. yeah, and then and uh, and so this is a project where a student made uh, rave gloves with accelerometers to activate um, LEDs. This is Joaquin showing the gloves off. You know, again, this is uh, yeah. I guess spring 2010 it says. Yep, September 19, 2010. When I posted it. <laughs> and again, like this was that era where, you know, the rave scene uh, had changed and the tech for for um, for music and dance and EDM was also just at this other place and to have students that were developing software and hardware solutions for raves was really intriguing and interesting and what would turn into festivals instead of raves. So um, to kind of uh, uh, get close to wrapping up here, this is one one project that I worked on with, with uh, Brandon Man, I don't even know when this was. I want to say it was like 2004. Here we are with Brandon Marley. What's up? We're using uh, and Drake. Drake's and Drake. Here. There's yes. Drake. And uh, we are using uh, Johnny Lee's Carnegie Mellon software to uh, calibrate our IR pen multi touch pad. And it is totally working. It is totally awesome. We're here in the Act Lab TV office at uh, the University of Texas at Austin. And uh, we just want to tell Johnny he rocks and that we really appreciate him making this awesome, awesome software for us to mess with. Thank you. So uh, the way it worked is you'll see this Wii remote was sitting there. Uh, we connected the Wii remote, I think, if I remember correctly, through Bluetooth uh, to the computer. And then um, the Wii remote itself has a little IR uh, sensor here. And so you would point it at the screen and then you would uh, use that little test pattern there and you would shine the IR pin, which was literally just a battery and an a infrared LED. And, um, and you would hit it at those points like we showed. And then it would just, when you, whenever you push the button, it would just work as a mouse and you could click real quick and it would, it would do a, a, a like button press. So um, this guy, Johnny Lee at Carnegie Mellon had developed the software to do it. And so we were just testing it out. But, but it, you know, this is kind of the space um, that I really want to get into because I think it really pushes people's minds. Uh, we had students that would go uh, and do this kind of work. And then they go work for Adobe. They go work for nonprofits. They go, you know, do all kinds of stuff. But, it, it, you know, doing this kind of work, for me at least, it's frustrating and aggravating at times, but it's very rewarding and uh, you get to use your hands. You have to use your mind a little bit and you have to ask for help. That's what I like. Um, and it's exciting, uh, at least to an extent. Um, as y'all can tell, I get a little frustrated when I do it, but uh, <laughs> that's what I say to an extent. Um, but really it's like, it's just this, this really cool uh, 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 group that you create and, um, and space because you know, I showed you, I don't know, just a handful of projects just now. There's so many, tens of more projects and tens of more people to, I mean, I left so many people out just now uh, showing what I showed, but I just wanted to kind of give you all a taste of where I'm starting to go um, in terms of my research with new media, kind of trying to kind of go back to this, bring it back out and, uh, and then bring new to it. And definitely 
one of my goals this summer is to, um, like I showed you all my, my little Arduino starter kit. This kit like has been out for like 10 years or close to it. Um, it's nothing new. Okay. But what's new is, uh, uh, social and cultural practices of, of technology use has changed. And so how I would activate this 10 years ago versus to how I would activate it now is going to be different because of the fact that I'm so interested in, in feeding data through it. And so what this comes with is it comes with, uh, uh, an interface, the Arduino interface. Then it comes with some resistors, capacitors, LEDs, some motors. Um, but I also ordered, uh, some LED, um, arrays. So I think the first one I ordered is an eight by eight to just to get started. It may be a, no, it's a 16 by 16. I ordered a 16 by 16 LED array. And, um, and so I'm going to start building out like some simple prototypes. And what my hope is, is to end up buying like 10 of these for the lab and start leading, uh, not in class, but outside of class, um, people that are interested in this. One of the things I've learned about making stuff is that, um, it's one thing to teach it. It's another thing to have students just want to do it. And so what I tend to do in my classes, I have a little more structured, <laughs> structurelessness in that I let them make whatever they're passionate about. And what I'm trying to do, if I had an advanced class, I think I would start being a little more like, okay, you've made what you're comfortable with. Now let's make what you're uncomfortable with. And that really comes with um, kind of, this whole other health side of, of my life where um, I listen to this guy named David Goggins and he talks about becoming comfortable with the uncomfortable. And um, I think in this, this uh, space of, of teaching and, and the alternative pedagogical approaches I use with, uh, with empathy based learning, but also I, like myself empathizing with students and their anxiety and their pressures to do and make. Um, I, I really believe and people doing what they're passionate about and figuring out how to find what's uncomfortable about what they're trying to do and becoming comfortable with it. Because even when you have things that you love to do, you're still going to have parts that you are, are, are hitting roadblocks on. Whether you're introverted and it's asking for help or you're extroverted and you talk too much and you need to listen more, you know, and those are extremes of course, but um, it's uh, it's finding those, you know, different ways to deal with it, finding groups that will listen and hear you um, and provide space for you. And so that's what I'm hoping to do this summer is I'm going to have uh, a meetup every Wednesday from uh, six to seven uh, where we just ideate and talk about what we're working on. And then I'm going to have physical meetups on Tuesdays or Thursdays. We haven't locked it down yet. And um, where we're going to be messing with hardware and software, video, photography, talking about podcasts, talking about rethinking uh, academic journals, rethinking uh, uh, academia in general. So uh, I hope we all enjoyed this. I know it's a little long, but hey, you know, what can I say? This is a, this is a big project that I want to do. And I wanted to share a lot of what, what, um, what's been done in the past. I think if I was going to uh, do a part two to this and let me know if I should, uh, I would really want to go back to not my projects, but like other people's projects um, and show like one that I'll show real quick, just real quick. That's like unbelievably great is uh, uh, if I type in Act Lab Sandy Stone fan club. Um, it's not a fan club. It's an actual uh, fan club. And let's go see if we can find this thing. Sandy Stone's homepage. Oh man, I'm scared. She has a little sound that goes ah when you go to her page, and sometimes it's scary. Oh, that's not her homepage. Let's see if we can go over. That's like her original. Ooh, is it gonna do it? Is it gonna do it? I don't know. Let me see if there's a uh, her fan page. I'll have to find it later if if I can't find it right now. But uh, essentially what she did was she worked on this project where she took uh, oscillating fans and uh, made them kind of smart oscillating fans. And what they would do is they would use blob tracking software developed by her uh, uh, since past uh, uh, husband, uh, Simbi. And it would track you as you walked around the room and the fans would follow you and, uh, and, and have this like uh, presence 
uh, a tracking <laughs> built into it that that definitely offered some really interesting um, uh, 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 experience, both in person and then also watching people go through it. So kind of the uh, uh, the Panopticon idea. So, anyways, um, I'll, what I'll do is uh, I'll I'll definitely be checking in again on this uh, topic and um and sharing with you all more but i wanted to set a base and uh, thank you so much for watching i hope you're having a great day and i hope you enjoy this